Beginning with model year 2018, Toyota Camry models with 2.5 liter engines come equipped with an electric coolant pump. The electric coolant pump is controlled by the engine control module, or ECM. The ECM varies pump speed and coolant delivery determined by engine temperature and driving conditions. It is used in conjunction with the electric thermostat to maintain the and control temperature as needed. The electric coolant pump allows a variable amount of coolant to be circulated in the cooling system at any given time. In this video, we're going to show you how to determine good scan tool values as well as electric circuit function. We'll connect our scope to three of the pump terminals. The pump is mounted to the front of the engine and has a six wire connector. Terminal one is battery positive supply from the EFI relay. That's our scope channel one. We are measuring pump current around the red feed wire for terminal one on scope channel two. Terminal two is SWP pump drive duty. That's scope channel three. Terminal three is chassis ground. We voltage drop test this independently. Terminal four is battery positive supply from the EFI relay. We won't be monitoring this channel for our example here, but if you're having a problem, you should test this circuit as well. Terminal five is NWP pump speed. That's our scope channel four. Terminal six is chassis ground. We've voltage drop tested this independently. Using our iScan diagnostic software, viewing engine data stream, we can isolate the water pump PIDs along with engine RPM and coolant temperature. With key on, the engine off, and a cold engine, target pump speed is zero RPM. However, pump speed feedback is 150 RPM. During these conditions, the pump is not spinning. The 150 RPM value is a static pump feedback. We can confirm this by reviewing our scope pattern during the same conditions. No pump input or current draw, but there is a speed signal from the pump. During warm-up phase, engine coolant temp will increase. Pump desired speed and feedback speed match and are about 3,000 RPM. At idle warm, the engine coolant temp is now 150 degrees. Pump desired speed and feedback speed match and are at about 1,000 RPM. Once the vehicle reaches operating temperature of about 200 degrees, pump desired speed and feedback speed match and are about 900 RPM. Just note that you may have to drive the vehicle to reach this engine temp. During a test drive, pump desired speed and feedback speed should closely mirror each other and will vary depending on the ECM's control. Let's perform a quick review of the electrical circuit during a warm engine start. Pump drive duty, our channel three trace, shows no signal. Pump speed signal, channel four trace, shows a digital signal, currently a static speed signal. There is no current on channel two. Once the engine starts, you will see the pump drive duty on channel three begins to display a digital signal. Pump current is pulsed from two to about 13 amps until desired pump speed is achieved. With the engine at warm idle, there are about four speed pulses to every drive duty pulse. This will vary depending on pump speed. In this example, the pump was running at 1000 RPM. With iScan diagnostic software, we can manually activate the coolant pump to 3000 RPM. Once activated, confirm the pump speed PID matches the selected speed. You should be able to hear the pump running. You can also review your captured scope traces and confirm the values look good. For example, the digital signals and pump current. If the pump activates and there is no current, no work is being done. This could be due to a faulty power supply, impeller, or electric motor. Let's look at one failure mode as an example. The pump speed circuit is monitored for faults. If a short is detected, a fault is stored. Pump drive duty begins to pulse 
to see if the pump speed signal will return. Note the many pulses in this trace without a speed signal. Pump current shows the pump is moving. This confirms the pump can do work, but either the speed signal in the pump is faulty, the circuit to the ECM, or the ECM itself. With these known values, you can confirm you have good pump control, confirm the power and the ground are present, and confirm coolant pumping using current draw. Thanks for watching. Check our other videos for more Toyota diagnostic tests and procedures.